welcome welcome everyone so this is going to be a new unit and the name of this unit is unit 6 website development it's going to be 60 guided learning hours so that's six zero i have a link to the specification here which i'll show in a minute but i'll also put the link in the description so you can go get it yourself uh, i always recommend getting the extended diploma specification it has everything from all the others so let me just quickly open this web page here and from here let's do reject i'm going to go down to where it says specification here click on the link there now i do extended so i just clicked on my keyboard control and f so ctrl and f for foxtrot and i can search on this web page for whatever i want so in this case i'm going to type extended and as you can see we have extended certificate and we have extended diploma this one is the best one to get because when i open it well First of all, you can see this one is almost two megabytes in size. These are much smaller, right? So this one has more information. That's it. This will have all the units from all the other diplomas and certificates. So I like to use this one. Unit six. Here we go. Now, I'm not going to go over everything here now. This, is, this was just a quick way to show you where to find it and how to quickly get to what you need to get to. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Right, so what's next? What we will cover. I will not be going over all of the specification. I will go over the criteria for the coursework only. So I'm not going to teach you everything you need to know. Simply approaching the coursework, okay? We have three parts. Parts A, B, and C. Part A is understand the principles of website development. So this is going to be more research than anything else. It's very research heavy. It, this part honestly shouldn't take you any more than about two to three weeks worth of work. Um, again, obviously not having classes every day. It should take about two, two to three weeks, I would say, and that's very long. Part B, we design a website to meet the client's requirements. So we show in some way how we can, we show in some way how we want our website to look. So design typically means this is what I intend for it to look like. And for part C, we develop a website to meet the client's requirements. We implement, so we actually sit there and we make the website. Now I'm going to give some tips and tricks later on to say, well, to explain or to show which software is good. Uh, so the plan to do each section at a time. So I'm going to be making a video on each one. So for example, I'm going to do a video on P1, P2, M1, D1, so on and so forth. So it's a bit easier to break down. Um, I won't be giving help sheets here, but I'll be on my screen. I'll show everything that needs to be done for each one. Um, uploading documents is a bit of a pain right now. So the grade levels, I will be showing all the content for distinction. And this automatically covers pass, merit, and obviously distinction as well. Yeah, that's, that's that for that one. So part one from the specification, this is what it says. I'm not going to read this. Please feel free to pause and uh, read this yourselves. But essentially, we're going to choose two websites and we're going to analyze those two websites. And this is the merit criteria. Again, pause and have a quick read of that. And finally, we have the distinction criteria. Also, pause and have a read of that if you want. This is all. This was copied directly from the specification I showed you earlier. So if you prefer to read it there, go ahead and do that. Next, uh, software needed. This doesn't look as good as my other slides, but that's fine. Most schools have access to Microsoft Office and the Adobe Suite. From the Microsoft Office suite, we're going to need Microsoft Word for writing our report. I would say probably Microsoft PowerPoint for doing our designs. It doesn't have to be this, but this is probably the one I would recommend. And from the Adobe suite, we're going to need Dreamweaver for actually doing the website development, for making our actual website. And then free software alternatives. Yes, 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 you can use free software. So let's say you... You go to college, but you have your own laptop and you prefer working on your own laptop and it's better for you and you want to get some free software because the paid stuff the school has, you cannot afford right now. No problem. I'm going to go to these websites here. So we have WPS Office. Let me just click on that link. It works on Linux. It works on Windows. It's cross platforms. It works on Android as well. And I believe iOS. Go to the, I'll put the link in the description as well. And they give you, this is what it looks like for Mark as well. This is, they call it writer, not word. And they have presentation, not PowerPoint. And they have spreadsheet, not Excel. But they look and operate in exactly the same way. And you can even save your files as Microsoft compatible files. So DocX, uh, PowerPoint, which is PTX or something like that. 
same everything, the same formulas from Microsoft Excel work, and this is completely, completely, completely free. Okay, so I try that one as well. Another one that works quite well for most people is LibreOffice, which is this one here. I'll put the link in the description as well. This is more fully featured than WPS Office, but I prefer WPS Office personally because it just looks very modern, looks very clean, whereas I believe LibreOffice looks a bit clunky. But again, you choose the one you want. I would recommend WPS Office. And finally, um, when we go to use, when, when we go to actually build to implement our website, if you don't have access to something like Dreamweaver, which is which can be costly, I think for students it's like 15 to 20 pounds a month, and you, this coursework is only going to last about two, three months, right? So maybe you don't want to pay that much money. You can use this software here completely free again. The website does say it's not secure to download from here or to access this website, but I've been using this software for years and years and years, and I've never had any issues, but that's just me. It's called Blue Griffin, and again, completely free, so feel free to use this. Let's see what's next on my slide. Okay, report references. I will show you a very simple way to reference. This is something you should get used to doing. When you go to university, you have to reference on every single report or document that you have. If you don't reference, what that says is, this information that's in my document is something I not only theorized myself, but I tested it and everything came from me. Nothing I found here was found, on a, found in a book or on a website or given to me by someone else. All the knowledge in this document or paperwork is directly from me. Very, very, very unlikely for someone of, of your age and your skill level. Not that it's impossible, but very unlikely. So I'm not going to stick to a specific reference. So I'm just going to simply show you what should work for most examiners. And that's it. Well, thank you guys for watching. This was just the introduction to Unit 6, Website Development. Please stay tuned for the other sections. Now again, just like before, I'm going to try my hardest to release these videos in a timely manner so that it can help you along with whatever your teacher has given you to do your coursework as well. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment and share.